nowadays what we see is actually more and more about the rani lakshmi bai is more and more is talked up as a myth but not the history but today uh, this is our small try to make a awareness and in, get everybody inspired and learn more about rani lakshmi bai so before we uh, start today's program i would like actually to uh, introduce the team uh, smap dfw team who who is behind this program today so of course my name is chaya gai i am also actually team lead for the smap dfw uh, next to me is uh, vijay gai who is also a chapter founder and uh, and the smap uh, dfw lead then uh, we have our uh, it zoom team ajinkya mahajan ajinkya uh, thank you of course and uh, of course the kids uh, allocation competition the concept and actually the preparation is done by prayag wadje and vinaya firke namaskar namaskar and for uh, this competition our judges are going to be uh, abhijit londe namaskar uh, prayag wadje and namaskar vinaya firke and of course today's uh, today's program mc is going to be uh, yogesh mirkhedkar namaskar uh, vijay bamane and of course our uh, kids uh, of course our smap youth kanaiya bamane so um without any further ado let's get started and uh, of course the i am going to give this virtual mic to kanaiya please take it over hello my name is kanaiya bamne and we're going to be talking about dushar gokle ji dushar gokle ji by roots is from mumbai india and now settled in dallas fort worth okay. metroplex okay. he is now singing and teaching marathi sanskrit and music to younger generations and kids in addition to fully working in cyber securities industries he volunteers for many local activities his family equally contributes in many of his activities He is glad to be part of this community, and now please welcome Tushar Gokhale ji. Namaste, all. Uh, thank you very much for quick introduction. Um, I'm very uh, obliged to be part of this map group here, and um, uh, I think I'm going to uh, start with uh, as as we always do for any event or any activity uh, with Lord Ganesh, Ganesh Vandana, uh, followed by. Um, a few lines on zhashi ki rani which are very popular uh, but i'm just going to read those out uh, for all of you uh, for all of us here um, on the occasion of this uh, rani lakshmi bai jayanti um, am i audible audible good enough rest of the team yes okay. uh, we'll do ganesh vandana um, i know uh, it's all virtual but uh, uh, please sing along while you're on, on mute um, and uh, please enjoy hopefully it will be Uh, a good experience for all of us here vakratund mahakaya surya koti samaprabha nirvighnam kuru me deva सर्वकार्येशु गाइए गणपति जगवंदन गाइए गणपति जगवंदन शंकर सुवन भवानी नंदन शंकर सुवन भवानी नंदन गाइए गणपति जगवंदन गाइए गणपति जगवंदन सिद्धि सदन गजवदन विनायक 
ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಸದನ ಗಜವದನ ವಿನಾಯಕ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಸುಂದರ ಸಬಲಾಯಕ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಸುಂದರ ಸಬಲಾಯಕ ಶಂಕರ ಸುವನ ಭವಾನಿ ನಂದನ ಶಂಕರ ಸುವನ ಭವಾನಿ ನಂದನ ಗಾಯಿಯೇ ಗಣಪತಿ ಜಗವಂದನ ಗಾಯಿಯೇ ಗಣಪತಿ ಜಗವಂದನ ಮೋದಕ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮುದ ಮಂಗಲ ದಾತ ಮೋದಕ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಮುದ ಮಂಗಲ ದಾತ ವಿದ್ಯಾಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ವಿಧಾತ ವಿದ್ಯಾಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ವಿಧಾತ ಶಂಕರ ಸುವನ ಭವಾನಿ ನಂದನ ಶಂಕರ ಸುವನ ಭವಾನಿ ನಂದನ ಗಾಯಿಯೇ ಗಣಪತಿ ಜಗವಂದನ ಗಾಯಿಯೇ ಗಣಪತಿ ಜಗವಂದನ ಮಾಗತ ತುಳಸಿದಾಸ ಕರ ಜೋರೆ ಮಾಗತ ತುಳಸಿದಾಸ ಕರ ಜೋರೆ ಬಸಹಿ ರಾಮಸಿಯ ಮಾನಸ ಮೋರೆ ಶಂಕರ ಸುವನ ಭವಾನಿ ನಂದನ ಶಂಕರ ಸುವನ ಭವಾನಿ ನಂದನ ಗಾಯಿಯೇ ಗಣಪತಿ ಜಗವಂದನ ಗಾಯಿಯೇ ಗಣಪತಿ ಜಗವಂದನ ಮೋರೆಯ ಮೋರೆಯ ಗಣಪತಿ ಬಾಪ್ಪ ಮೋರೆಯ 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 ಗಣಪತಿ ಬಾಪ್ಪ ಮೋರೆಯ 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 ಗಣಪತಿ ಬಾಪ್ಪ ಮೋರೆಯ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ with lord ganesha's blessings uh, which i think um, we always uh, seek for in every good occasion uh, may he may he give us good strength good energy uh, good wisdom to deal with our uh, day to day fights and um, exactly the way um, jhasi ki rani lakshmi bai uh, contributed and sacrificed her, her, her life uh, for the betterment of society community nation and i think she put um, everyone above the nation above everything which is i think a very fascinating thing that we all should um, not only admire but uh, to take it to the new generation or the young generation um, so with that i think we all um, are fairly aware about khub ladi mardani wo thi jhasi wali rani it's a, a pretty nice inspiring poem um, that at least i have uh, or we have heard uh in some shape or form during our childhood and during even um, our, our you know adulthood uh so i'm just going to read uh, maybe three or four stanzas of that because it's pretty long uh, uh poem which talks about the entire history of rani lakshmi bai and her contributions to the society and community and to the nation obviously uh but hindi mein hai so i'll try to read uh, uh to the best i can um so with that i think uh, Uh, i'm just going to start four stanzas basically talking uh, briefly about her and then um, um the kind of her characteristics and then the way she contributed to the uh, nation so sihasan hil uthe rajavanshon ne bhrukuti taani thi boodhe bharat mein aayi fir se nayi jawani thi gumi hui azadi ki keemat sabne pehchani thi दूर फिरंगी को करने की सबने मन में थानी थी चमक उठी सन सत्तावन में वह तलवार पुरानी थी बुंदे ले हर बोलो के मुंह हमने सुनी कहानी थी खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वो थी झांसी वाली रानी थी कानपुर के नाना की 
मुंह बोली बहन छबीली थी लक्ष्मीबाई नाम पिता की वह संतान अकेली थी नाना के संग पढ़ती थी वह नाना के संग खेलती थी बर्छी ढाल कृपाण कटारी उसकी यही सारी सहेली थी वीर शिवाजी की गाथाए उसको याद जुबानी थी बुंदे ले हर बोलो के मुंह हमने सुनी कहानी थी खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वो तो झांसी वाली रानी थी लक्ष्मी थी या थी वो दुर्गा वह स्वयं वीरता का अवतार देख मराठे पुलकित होते उसकी तलवार रोके वार नकली युद्ध व्यूह की रचना खेलना खूब शिकार सैन्य घेरना दुर्ग तोड़ना ये थे उसके प्रिय खिलवाड़ महाराष्ट्र कुल देवी उसकी आराध्य भवानी थी बुंदे ले हर बोलो के मुंह हमने सुनी कहानी थी खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वो थी झांसी वाली रानी थी जाओ रानी याद रखेंगे हम कृतज्ञ भारतवासी यह तेरा बलिदान जगवे जगवेगा स्वतंत्रता अविनाशी हो वे चुप इतिहास लगे सच्चाई को फांसी हो मदमाती विजय विजय मिटा दे गोले गोलों से चाहे झांसी तेरा स्मारक तू खुद ही होगी तू खुद अमिट निशानी थी बुंदे ले हर बोलो के मुंह हमने सुनी कहानी थी खूब लड़ी मर्दानी वो थी झांसी वाली रानी थी मैं मेरी झांसी नहीं दूंगी बस हमने तो यही स्कूल में पढ़ा था वेन वी वेर यंग एंड प्रोबेबली दिस पोएम्स आई एम ग्लैड टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस इनोवेटिव इवेंट एंड दिस प्रोग्राम एंड आई विश द एंटायर टीम एवरी वन अ वेरी गुड विशेष एंड ऑल द सक्सेस थैंक यू वेरी मच Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Who's next? Audud. I think. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you hear me properly? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um. So we will uh, go with the quiz. Um. Uh, this is short and sweet. Uh. goal is to uh, educate ourselves um, and for fun uh, so uh, you all would need to go to this uh, link um i am going to post this on me... the event page as well on the facebook okay yeah Sure. What is the code for that? Well, Kahoot, what just, is the code? Just yeah, I'm just trying to generate that. Um. Yeah, I need to share my screen for this and. One second. Uh, yes. can you can share okay did we last thing he just post uh, he's uh, joining back oh okay 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 so
so we posted actually uh, the link that uh, everybody needs to log on to that and uh, to play a quiz. And uh, when Audut is back online, he's going to post a code as well that you need to access the quiz. Uh, hi. hi. Can you yes, hear me? go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Sorry yes. about that. Mm -hmm. No worries. Uh, uh, screen sharing is disabled. One second. Um, you try now. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, you need to put this uh, pin number uh, 384 D84601. And then it would ask for um, some nickname. Uh, you can put your real name or some nickname if you want to be anonymous. You can give it some time and start when everyone is in. So we have six participants so far. Uh, Chayajin, let me know uh, when we can start. Yes, go ahead and start, that's okay. Okay. Okay, or we maybe, have yeah, wait one minute, yes. Yeah. Maybe wait one more minute. Yeah, maybe let's start because yeah. we don't want to. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it will start in now 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the best, everyone. Uh, you would get the question on the screen and then also on your mobile device. Um, and you need to uh, select the right answer on the mobile device. Uh, there will be 20 seconds for each question. So you can select the answer on your mobile device out of four options. What was Jashiki Rani's real name? So we got three correct answers here. Real name was Manikarnika. And Vijay is leading. Did the questions leak for Vijay?
only first one <laughs> Nice. Oh, did you like to uh, read the question and answer as well? Okay, sure. Um, yeah. At what age was Maharani Lakshmi Bai got married? 14 years, 12 years, 16 years or 18 years? So the correct answer is 14 years and we got two correct answers. Kana is leading now. What was the name of Maharani Lakshmi Bai's husband? Damodar Rao, Gangadhar Rao, Ganpati Rao or Shashidhar Rao? So Gangadhar Rao is the correct answer. We got one person got correct answer. Kana is on fire. Name of Maharani Lakshmi Bai's son is Shivaji Rao, Narayan Rao, Damodar Rao or Dattatreya. So the correct answer is Damodar Rao. Who was a companion of Maharani Lakshmi Bai and became well known among historians? Tarabai, Annapurna, Jalkari or Padmavati? So the correct answer is Jalkari. <laughs> Along with Tatya Tope, Maharani Lakshmi Bai captured the fort of Gwalior, Agra, Mirat, or Patna. was the fort of Gwalior. Who asked Maharani Lakshmi Bai to surrender and leave the fort? Tatya Tope, Hug Rose, Queen Victoria or Lord Dalhousie? Rose is the correct answer here. Name the horses of Jasiki Rani. So we have multiple options here Sarangi, Pata, Badal, Pawan, Ravi. So you need to correct the uh, select the right one. Sarangi, Pawan, and Badal. Who 
who started the revolt of 1857 maharani lakshmi bai nana saheb peshwa mangal pande aur tatya tope mangal pande is the correct answer रिवॉल्ट ऑफ 1857 स्टार्टेड फ्रॉम मीरत ग्वालियर कानपुर और झांसी मीरत इज द करेक्ट आंसर हियर How much annual pension did East India Company offer to Maharani Lakshmi Bai to leave the Jhansi fort? Fifty thousand, sixty thousand rupees, seventy thousand, or eighty thousand? Sixty thousand rupees. Where did Maharani Lakshmi Bai die? Kanpur, Lucknow, Gwalior, or Jhansi? Gwalior is the correct answer. Where is Rani Jhansi Marine National Park located? Gulf of Kutch, Uttar Pradesh, Odisha, or Andaman and Nicobar Islands? Andaman and Nicobar Islands is the correct answer. Okay, so we got the winner, Kanha. Big round of applause for Kanha, and then Tushar. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. You want to stop sharing? Yeah, yeah. I will. Can we play another game? No, this is how these games are played. So, oh, it's done. It's done. Yeah. Got first. Great job, oh, Kano. On research. Thank, thank you. So <laughs> much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Okay. मी योगेश व्याख्याल कर एक अशा सज्जन का परिचय दे कि तुम्हारा हिस्ट्री इतिहास परत पर अपने झांसी झांसी राहनी सोबत जे लड़ले तात्या तोपे डिसेंडेंट्स है लिनियज है पराग तोपे कम्स फ्रॉम द लिनेज ऑफ तात्या तोपे वन ऑफ द लीडर्स ऑफ वॉर ऑफ 1857 ही इज द ऑथर ऑफ ऑपरेशन रेड लोटस दैट प्रेजेंट्स द वॉर ऑफ 1857 फ्रॉम इंडियन पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू अप अंटिल नाउ वी हैव बीन लर्निंग ऑल फ्रॉम ब्रिटिश पर्सपेक्टिव बट थैंक यू पराग फॉर डूइंग दैट ही डीकोडेड द मिस्ट्री ऑफ Red lotus flowers and chapatis that were used in planning of the war logistics. The book is available on Amazon. If uh, I, I would, I would go to Amazon right now and get it. 
after I'm done introducing Parag, Paragji here. Parag Tope is an entrepreneur and founder of Visual Stager, a do-it-yourself virtual staging software. After dropping out of IIT in Mumbai, Parag completed his undergrad in College of Engineering Pune. He completed his MS and later an MBA in Strategy and Finance from Ross School of Business in Michigan. He is interested in civil civilizational security and is currently working on a book called Second Shanti. I would be very interested in learning about that book too, Paralji. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, namaste, everyone. Uh, I hope you all had a good uh, Deepavali. Uh, belated greetings for that. Um, also, uh, since we're celebrating uh, Lakshibai's Jayanti, uh, we are almost, I think, 194 years after uh, her birth, which was shortly after Diwali, I think, if I'm not mistaken, shortly after Diwali in 1828. Uh, so let me just give, give you a quick background about what I'll be speaking today. I'll be speaking a little bit about 1857. That's not the main focus of my talk. Uh, I'll be talking about uh, the world that we live in today in the context of what our leaders fought for in 1857, where we are and then where we can go. So that's roughly my, my current interest. Uh, history is only uh, an aspect towards, towards that interest. Uh, 1857, the roots of 1857 were roughly 30 years before that. And that was around the time Lakshmi Bhai was born. That was a very difficult period for India. So 18, uh, 1820s was uh, the time in which India was going through a transition. So uh, for example, uh, politically speaking, uh, the Marathas were defeated over three set of uh, wars with the English. Uh, 1818 was a final a final war in which Bajira was exiled. Uh, he, he was exiled to Bithur, which is near Kanpur. Uh, and the Mughal emperor, instead of getting a pension from the Marathas, was now getting a pension from the English. Uh, the economy was still doing okay. India was still a major contributor in, uh, in world industrial economy, was the largest producer of textiles. We were the lowest cost producer of textiles, even in the early 1800s. But the British policies, once they had taken over, started to change in the 1830s. So there was an all out assault on every aspect of India. Uh, the economy was now being dragged. Uh, there were heavy taxation for domestic manufacturing. Um, there was uh, Indians were not allowed to export. East India Company was given a monopoly. Uh, the English went further. Uh, they started attacking uh, India's uh, personal, Indians' personal freedom. For example, there were laws that were being passed uh, to convert. Uh, to, so the idea was to get Hindus to convert to Christianity. So that was a period, 1830s, 1840s, and 1850s was a period in which the British were actively involved in converting uh, Hindus to Christianity. Um, the word Jagarnath, which is the uh, which comes from Jagannath Yatra, the missionaries considered Hindu Hinduism's Jagarnath uh, to be a, a force that needed to be stopped. So that was that was the goal was to get uh, to stop the the, the Hindu Jagarnath. Uh, the War of 1857. So one of the things that uh, in the quiz there were a couple of questions that were asked. First of all. The word revolt, the word mutiny uh, is not something which, uh, which I, I would say it's, it, it doesn't pay due to what, uh, what our ancestors actually, actually did. The, by not calling it a war, you essentially accept uh, the Western theory that India was never a nation. A war is between two nations. So if you don't want to call it a war, you, you, you use words like revolt or fight. This was an Anglo-Indian war. There were two nations, England and India. Let's be very clear about it. Uh, this was a war. We, we fought it against another nation. India has always existed as a nation. So let's, let's get that clear, right? 
the second thing is the second there's another question which was who started uh, the war i mean let's say if you call it a revolt if you call it a mutiny then mangal pandey did yes uh, because that's the context uh, the marxists created uh, a theory in the 1950s they started looking at 1857 from a very interesting point of view they saw this as an opportunity to project the the success of the peasants so they wanted to project this as a what's called as a subaltern view of history subaltern view meaning somebody who is subjugated somebody who is below a certain level so mangal pandey fit that because he was a poorly paid sepoy who was being given hardships by the by the british and so the march uh, revolt uh, in the march 1857 revolt of mangal pandey is considered to be the the first trigger and that fits in very nicely with a with a marxist view of uh, of indian history but the planning for 1857 started in 1851 so when bajirao too died uh, nana sahib peshwe responded to baiza bai shinde's request for the marathas getting together and fighting a war against the british so it was it was a well planned war uh, uh, maratha leadership uh, leadership was at the, at, the, at the helm of the war baiza bai shinde was exiled from uh uh from gwalier in the 1830s but she was the primary instigator if you want to call it that but she was a primary leader who encouraged everybody to join in so she was a matriarch and she got all the marathas to join in she also reached out to the moguls so this was a maratha mogul alliance against the british so who started in 57 if if you want to say baiza bai shinde that would be a good answer nana sahib that would be a good answer mangal pandey was definitely a part of it there's no question soldiers fought and soldiers died for this so the idea is not to discredit mangal pandey but but yeah to say to take away the credit from uh, our leaders would be uh, would be incorrect so uh, the, uh, given this context uh, 1857 achieved some very uh, important goals no war is ever 100 to 0 All, almost all wars are usually even even to get somebody to surrender or to give up takes a lot of effort so um, i won't go, go through all the different phases of the war but in 1858 uh, when pretty much most of the leaders had either had surrendered or had been killed uh, tatya tope had actually crossed the narmada and this was a period in which the british did not want the war to expand into into the deccan area so they made a very important concession our leaders had asked for five it was a five point proclamation that was made in azamgarh by both nana sahib and um, the grandson of uh, bahadur shah zafar um, they they had said that the british rule is economically oppressive it is politically oppressive and that the british are 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 forcing a christian a christianity on on indians and therefore help us win political freedom so that you can get your economic freedom and personal freedom so this was a very important aspect it was a proclamation there was clarity amongst indian leaders as to what they wanted to achieve the british had to decide in 1858 that if they wanted to continue plundering india they had to give up on something and one of the things that they did was they blamed the missionary activity on the east india company shut the company down and then promise that the state will not interfere directly into the matters of religion the missionary activity continued behind the scenes but it was not as blatantly done as it was done from the 1830s 1840s and 1850s so this allowed india to be uh, to remain a civilization and we continued to fight on until 1946 18 february 1946 where uh, the indian navy uh, quite similar to uh, 1857 um, we took over uh, the hundreds of naval establishments around the coast from karachi to chittagong and there was a, a ship uh, uh, docked in in mumbai uh, the hms narbada it was a communication ship and that was used to communicate with all the naval establishments and within 24 hours the british announced india's freedom uh, this was like a a fully synchronized uh, uh, attack on on the british the british had they had to decide whether they were going to send in their air force and weekend after world war 2 they had no intention to fight so they announced india's freedom within 24 hours so 1857 we lost but 1946 we won and it was it was 
pretty pretty rapid the credit for 18, 1946 never went most of you probably have not even heard of uh, uh, the, the the war of 1946 but it was a one day war and, and that we won that uh, but we are here in 2022 a lot has changed in india uh, in in the 1820s when lakshmiva was won india's past was relatively speaking good but the future looked bleak we are in 2022 the past was bleak at least the last 150 years were very difficult but the future looks bright uh, there are many things that especially we are at an uh, at a point in history for a i call it a forever nation sanatan in terms of there is no you know as far as we know it has always existed we are a very important juncture and there are certain things especially for uh, us living abroad, the Antarashtriya Parivar for Shivaji Maharaj, is that there are certain things that we could do uh, to uh, to remember the sacrifices of people like uh, Lakshmi Bai and, uh, and, and Tatya Tope. So, for example, uh, 2022 saw the death of a monarch, the Queen of England. Right? They call her a monarch. And there's a reason why uh, she's called as a monarch, because the Abrahamic idea of uh, rule is there is a, sing a singular titular head uh, and the idea of a monarch, monarch means a single ruler, right? Now, in, in English, we take the word Rani and we translate that into a queen, right? We, we take Raja and we translate that as a king, but there's a huge difference between kings, queens, and Rajas and Ranis. Uh, kings by default in Abrahamic systems are rulers, but by rulers meaning they create the rules and society has to follow by those rules. In Christianity or Islam, the, the, the ruler has divine right over becoming the ruler. The, the, therefore, there is a God-given right and to control the land to and to, to tell people what is right and what is wrong. That was kind of the battle between the church and the king, but that is something which has always existed in Abrahamic systems. You look at uh, Rani or a responsibility for Rani or a Raja, the idea is they are the champions. They are the protectors. They don't create dharma. They don't create laws. The, the idea is that they are the, uh, they are the champions of society. The so society creates laws and society will implement the laws. The idea of the king is to protect whatever the society creates. So the king is subservient to society rather than the ruler of society. And this is something which if you look at um, in 1858, uh, there was a uh, uh, Marathi priest called as Vishnu Bhat Borse. And he was a poor, he was a poor Brahmin and he was traveling in the north and hoping, uh, hoping to make some money uh, as Dakshina because like Vaisa uh, uh, Shinde had arranged a large yadnya in which he was going to give Dakshina to anybody who was coming there. But he got caught in this battle, and at one point in, point in time, he actually ended up meeting Lakshmi Bai uh, when she had. Uh, this was before she was heading on to Gwalior, and um, in that conversation, and then he's written the book. Uh, he wrote he, he wrote his notes, and eventually it became a book called as Maza Pravas, in which is uh, in which she told him that Mala kahi mazla kahi ek garaz nahi. Paruntu Sarva Hindu Badalsa Dharma Sambande Abhiman Dharun Karmas Pravrutta Zahale. She said, I didn't need anything. But uh, taking pride in, in uh, Hindu Dharma, uh, I was motivated to fight the British. So, so she, she saw this as her responsibility, she of something that she needed to do. So she was, she was doing her job as a Rani, not as a queen who was entitled to lord over her subjects. So she was doing her job defending uh, people's values and she died She died doing that, right? So uh, conceptually, if you look at the people that we have put on a pedestal in the past, the, re uh, the, the difference between, again, if you look at, for example, the, son of, uh, the English, uh, the parliament, English parliament has the house of commons and the house of lords. The word lord, for example, if you were to translate that into India will say Dev, right? Now, think about how we look at Dev versus somebody looks at Lord, right? A Lord is somebody who is, quote, noble. By noble meaning they own the land 
and they dictate to people what they ought to do. They collect rent from the people. Farmers are not free. Farmers are their serfs. And they are the people who are lording over people. The word lording over comes from that idea. It's a divine right that they have to lord over people. Now, for example, if you look at the word Dev, I mean, in Marathi, for example, if you say, Dev so you're not going to think somebody who's all powerful and almighty and owns a lot of land and tells you what to do. You will say that person has qualities that you think are worthy of respect. Somebody oftentimes will be simple. Somebody oftentimes who is more, more uh, prone to giving rather than taking. You have the two exact words. You can translate them from one to the other language, but the context completely changes, right? So we, we are in a very unique situation because as people who come from a background which is, uh, uh, which is Hindu, but we live in a society that is fundamentally uh, Abrahamic. So obviously we don't want to be disrespecting the society, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that we have to be pushovers in our idea of political philosophy, right? So that's something which is important that we ought to do. There are many concepts uh, that, uh, uh, that are different. I'll focus on one concept that, uh, uh, that makes us fundamentally different than, uh, than anybody else, right? Especially it's important for people living in the US. Uh, for example, you must have heard uh, dharma gives, dharma protects artha, kama, and moksha, right? So artha can be roughly translated as either purpose or money. Kama is pleasure and moksha is uh, freedom or liberty. Uh, I call that a small triangle. This is something which by small triangle, I mean every human being on this planet or every being on this planet, not just human being, every being on this planet can have purpose, can have money, can have can get pleasure and can be free. This, this is a scalable and a sustainable triangle. Everyone can have it, right? We don't define how much money. We, we don't define who, who gets it and how it's got. But whatever you think, you work hard, you'll get. There's a larger triangle. Pursuit of that triangle is basically unsustainable. So these are complementary terms. The larger triangle is Kanchan, Kamini, and Kirti. Kanchan means wealth. Kamini means a life of hedonism and Kirti is fame. By definition, everybody can't be famous. The whole idea of fame is that there are 100 people, five people can be famous. 95 people are not famous. That, that's definition. That's Kirti, right? Same thing with Kancha. Not everybody can be wealthy. By definition, you won't call somebody wealthy if they had what you had. You would consider somebody wealthy because they have something more than what you have, right? So that is Kancha. And same thing with Kamini. Not everybody can be living a life of luxury and not doing any work. That is simply not sustainable, right? But yet we live in a society which puts the pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of wealth, the pursuit of fame on a pedestal, right? Again, the idea is not to critique the society, but to understand that there is a different culture that we come from and there are certain different pedestals that, that we have. And I think understanding this will make us decisions, uh, will help us make decisions. So again, fundamentally uh, what what brings us and what shivaji maharaj fought was for a swarajya swarajya which was about indic ideas and this indic ideas is what we as uh, people of indian origin people of uh, uh, people who have consider shivaji maharaj's sacrifice and people like lakshmibai tatya tope nana sahib their sacrifices to be important should consider that we represent the ideas that we have that our ancestors fought for and it is the ideas not identity so for example today people of indian origin are getting into positions of power rishi sunak became the prime minister of england then there are people who are ceos that's fine there's nothing wrong with that power to them good for them that automatically does not mean what is good for them does not automatically translate into what is good for us. By us meaning not just Hindus, I mean the world, right? Because if we are one civilization that has genuinely looked out for the well-being of not just human beings, but for all beings on this planet. So let's focus away from identity. Let's focus on ideas and ideas are what makes us unique. Rather than looking at somebody's color of skin and saying that, well, this is a brown person and this is a black person, this is a white person. 
the, the phrases such as person of color, people of color, it, it makes us deviants of some sort. Let's focus on ideas. Let's focus on what makes us unique, what makes us different, and how Hindu ideas can genuinely transform uh, the world that we live in. And that hopefully should be something that we all uh, take as we go forward. With that, let me uh, end my talk for today. That was amazing. That was great. Thank you. And one more I comment. Uh, about history. Go ahead, Pigeon. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, one more comment. Uh, like uh, very good things uh, in one word, Parak told at the end. Look at the ideas, not the identity. And we always, on, because we are on the different groups and everything, we always mess up ourselves with all these messages and uh, lost the meaning. Thank you, Parag. <laughs> Anyone has any questions? Uh, I know we have an exciting speaker coming up next, so. I think it will take some time for the people to digest that, uh, you know, the, the thought you last, last sentence you made, but that's a very, you know, very important uh, for the progress of humanity because today the humanity is divided based on the stuff. Um, so I think one thing I, I, I feel that the people should ask as the social platform we're using now uh, to communicate this, I think more and more uh, the ideas around like, you know, how to promote the ideas rather than the different uh, color or race or, you know, uh, because today, as you said, Rishi Sinek become, become a prime minister and I think the social network was basically completely flooded with, okay, different meanings of being, you know, like uh, Britishers ruled India, now we'll rule, you know, the so that's like a, that's not a, that's not the right way to say it, but, but, you know, people still don't, uh, are, are not leaving that history, what we have been learned. I think, you know, in the history, the people are still attaching to themselves rather than attaching to ideas. That's something which is a very powerful statement you made that. Uh, and I think everybody should, but you should basically take it uh, that way that ideas always becomes, you know, more uh, important than anything else. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Parag. Thank you. Uh, next one, Vijayji. All right. So now we have a next uh, speaker. Um, I think uh, Anima Ji on this call. And I think I'm so much excited to introduce uh, introduce Anima Ji. Um, and uh, one of the things when I was reading about her was uh, so much, uh, you know, gave me you know, the pleasure to know that she has uh, had always a dream of becoming, you know, aerospace, uh, you know, engineering or, or, you know, she wants to look, she used to look at all of the, you know, stars and she she's aiming for the stars. And she comes from, uh, you know, uh, Jargao, which is, I think, uh, near Dhule, in, in the Dhule district. Um, and as uh, as I read about it's, her- it's Jal uh, Dhule is in Jalgao district. <laughs> It's the opposite, actually. <laughs> yeah, Dhule is in Jalgao district. I saw Jalgao. Jalgao is the place. <laughs> I think my friends are there from the Jalgao. So, okay. okay. So, yeah, got it. So, Dhule district, right? Got it. So, thank you so much for correcting that. So, no, yeah, I think... Uh, go ahead. Okay. Now, I think uh, one other thing which I think I, I uh, want to tell you about Animaj is that she is very ambitious. Uh, she has... Uh, you know, being like, you know, into the software industry, I think she, she made, um, you know, into the NASA now, I think as far as I, as far as I read about, you know, and I think I understood about uh, Animaji is that she is, uh, you know, basically um, uh, into the NASA for last uh, few years and she lives in Houston. Uh, and I think um, she has uh, big aims, I think right now to, to you know, work in the to get into the you know NASA's Ames Research Center right now. She's working in, in that in that division uh, and um, working for the space flight program at NASA Johns, uh, Johnson Space Center as an Orient spacecraft simulator engineer. Um, and uh, I think it, without um, too much of uh, you know details, I want to have the Animaji uh, enlighten us 
with her, uh, you know, the journey in her life and as well as uh, inspire us about some of these, uh, you know, Rani uh, Lakshmi's thoughts uh, and how she has, how she has been used to to get into the, you know, like to prop uh, propel her uh, career as well. So Anima ji, uh, just please, uh, uh, you know, take take the podium and please, uh, you know, enlighten us. Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, introduction and namaskar everyone. Um, a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, can you please allow me to share screen, Chaya? Yeah, please. Because pictures yes, you are speak... a co-host. Yes, so oh, you can awesome. share. Now I can. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I mentioned to Chaya, so pictures speak louder than words. Absolutely. So best, <laughs> best way is to share my journey through the pictures. Um, I have several yeah. topics that I talk on um, because I am a NASA speaker. I've spoken uh, for a couple of TEDx events. Um, so several topics out of which I asked Chaya, what should I talk about? And she mentioned your journey from um, Jalgaon to NASA. So I try to customize the same set of slides <laughs> because there are some introductory slides that talk about my journey. So I'll focus on that in this one. I call this deep space dreams. Um, oh, before I dive right in, thank you so much for inviting me um, for this special event. I've done a lot of talks, but this is the first time a unique event for celebrating Rani Lakshmi Bai's uh, birth. So thank you. Um, I, I'm really honored to be speaking on the birth celebration of such a unique and um, awesome personality, a brave, strong, um, we all know about her, right? <laughs> and sometimes um, this phrase is used uh, when, when on my journey, and I'm like, no, I'm nowhere close to what she was, but I'm honored to be speaking on um, at this event. So thank you again. And now let me dive in. Um, so Deep Space Dreams, Making the Impossible Possible. The reason why I have this title is twofold. First is because as humanity, we are trying to do something impossible, right? We are trying to set up a sustainable base on the moon and then go and live on Mars. Uh, our body is not designed to live in the extreme environment of space. It's designed only for this comfortable environment of the Earth. We take the Earth's atmosphere, gravity, everything for granted. Uh, but we are attempting this and we are working towards that now with NASA's Artemis missions, we're going to go establish a sustainable base on the moon. So this is something impossible. We have to invent a lot of technologies to be able to survive in these extreme hostile environments. And so that's something impossible that we are trying to make possible. So I talk about the physio-psychological challenges humani humanity is facing, which I won't go into today. Uh, but that was one reason the title is this. And then the second reason is me, at this stage in my life, I'm trying to pursue a childhood dream of wanting to become an astronaut, <laughs> which is something impossible now because it's so late in life, right? But I'm trying to do everything I can and I haven't given up hopes. I give myself at least a couple of more opportunities to apply to the astronaut program. So let's see how far I get. So something impossible that I'm trying to make possible. Um, and so with that, let's move on to the next slide. So uh, let me go back where all of this started. So in Jal I grew up in Jalgaon. I was born in Dhure, grew up in Jalgaon. Uh, my Adzor was um, in Dhure. So um, studied at St. Joseph's Convent High School. During the summers, we would sleep on the terrace, right? I'm sure you all can relate to that. Um, so at that time, there was no light pollution. We could see the skies, the stars, even the arm of our galaxy. And when I would look at that, I didn't, I was, I would always wonder, can we travel up there? Uh, what is, what is up there? Can we go up there? I didn't know about travel, but can I go up there? Um, what all is out there? So, uh, when I was seven, we had a book exhibition in, at my school, St. Joseph's Convent. And in the book exhibition, I saw picture, books with pictures of astronauts laying on their back and launching into space. At that time, the US and the Russian space programs were at their peak, right? So that's when I figured out, oh, you have to become an astronaut, then you can go up to the stars. And so I, that dream took seed in my mind at that time itself, that I want to become an astronaut. How I was going to do that, I did not know. But growing up during my school years, that was one goal and I was always trying to figure out how can I do that? What can I do to become an astronaut? Then Rakesh Sharma ji became an astronaut. He flew through the Russian space program. 
that time I got to know, okay, you have to be in the Indian Air Force as a fighter pilot, then you will get to become an astronaut. And although the Indian Air Force was not accepting women as fighter pilots at that time, I decided to myself that I am going to try and become a fighter pilot in the Indian Air Force. By the time I graduate from college, maybe they will start hiring women, right? That positive uh, approach always has been my uh, big um, thing that has always kept me going. And so um, I decided to do a bachelor's in physics because I got the Indian Air Force application. They needed you to be a bachelor's in physics or a bachelor's in engineering. My dad's condition was whatever you have to study, you will be studying here in Jilgaon. I won't be able to send you anywhere outside. So I decided to pur pursue a bachelor's in physics. Physics was a subject of interest and uh, I somehow oriented my final project, the bachelor's project towards astronomy. That's how passionate I was about this topic. But while doing my bachelor's, I joined the NCC because I wanted to become physically strong, right? Physically fit uh, to become an Indian Air Force pilot. That would be a criteria. And so I would wake up at five o'clock, run for miles in the morning, come back. Uh, my dad had coaching classes. His coaching classes were really popular in um, Jilgaon. So I, um, there happened an event when he was sick and I went down and uh, took care of a couple of his batches. He saw how good I was with students. So he asked me, would you like to pursue this? And I'm like, yeah. So while studying for my bachelor's, I, while doing the NCC, I also started teaching uh, English science and math for fifth to eighth grade students uh, in my dad's coaching classes. So I was kind of paying for my own tuition, right? <laughs> so from that time itself, I learned how to multitask, um, how to balance everything and be really good at it. And so that has helped me in life um, uh, so far. Um, so while doing the bachelor's, um, again, after the bachelor's was done with distinction, I got the Air Force application. The first criteria still was you have to be a male. I decided to ignore that and apply anyways. What will happen at the most? They'll reject me. <laughs> but the second criteria was you need to have a perfect 2020 vision. And at that time, I had a slight myopia. I was short-sighted. So all my dreams were crushed. I couldn't ignore that criteria, right? So I couldn't apply. And that summer went really uh, kind of in uh, depression and crying. <laughs> what am I going to do? How all my life I've been planning towards this. What will I do next? But then my dad suggested there was a master's in computer applications course that had started two years, um, since two years at North Maharashtra University, our university in Jilgaon. So I applied to the course, had to give an entrance exam. At that time, it was a very special course. You had only 30 seats. Um, so I got accepted and I did my master's in computer applications, got married while I was doing that, uh, worked in Mumbai for few years. Um, got this op awesome opportunity to come to the U.S. as a software consultant uh, in California, San Jose. So while I was working, um, I had a son, my older one, and uh, he was three years, and I was watching the space shuttles launch because we were building the International Space Station up there, right? So the space shuttles were launching regularly. And that's when, and I found out there was a NASA center, NASA Ames Research Center um, near me. It was an hour's distance from me. So that's when this dream that had gone dormant started beckoning me again. This is my chance. Even though I'm 30 <laughs> and I have a full-time job and a three-year-old, I'm going to do something about this rather than keep thinking all my life, what if I had, right? So that's when I decided I want to do a master's in aerospace engineering because how else would I get to work for NASA? And plus, it, it, even when I was in India, I did want to learn some, um, do, I mean, study towards a degree that would give me some expertise in, or knowledge on how are rockets built, how do they work, airplanes, rockets. Uh, so this was the opportunity now that I was getting. And so I applied to San Jose State University, got accepted. Um, my parents, my husband couldn't understand why I wanted to do this. You have uh, a young child, you have a, a full-time job, you will not be able to do justice to your family. So they were totally against it, basically. <laughs> and they gave me a hard time, but I decided to uh, prove to them through my actions that you guys will always be my priority. I will, this will be the last um, lowest in priority. I'll do my duties for you and then uh, work on my dreams. And through actions, I showed that. And eventually they came to support me, which was a really big relief because when you have the family support, um, you get more energy um, to pursue your dreams, right? You get that um, positivity. Um, otherwise it's really difficult when you're struggling. It, it, you can't fight 
the battle alone. Uh, there were instances when I had to take my three-year-old with me to the college and all my friends from that time remember how young he was and today he's all grown up, he's in college. So uh, what a journey it has been since then. But yes, um, after that, I had to wait for a few years to become a US citizen because at NASA, you need to be a US citizen um, to work on any NASA projects. It's, it's, it's aerospace, right? Aerospace and defense of any country needs you to be a citizen of their um, country. It's sensitive stuff. So yeah, I had to wait for four to five years after that master's in aerospace engineering, kept applying, did not give up. It was frustrating at times. I was at Oracle at the time and the job was really great. I was doing really great, but my passion, my heart was here, right? So it was a struggle, um, but eventually, I, 2012, I got a call from the hiring manager for the Kepler mission. And the first question he asked was, are you a US citizen? I said, not yet, but I am going to be one uh, in a month. And so he said, come on over for an interview. I just had one interview with a large group of scientists and uh, managers and engineers. And they really liked my software and aerospace engineering background and hired me right then and there. So yeah, while working on the Kepler mission, Kepler is a space-based telescope to search for Earth-like planets around sun-like stars in our solar system. And um, working on that mission was um, a very, very fulfilling experience. I got to learn a lot um, and how NASA missions work. And since then, haven't looked back. I also looked for opportunities, how I can give back now, started sharing, um, talking about Kepler as a NASA speaker. That time I when I had gone to Jalgaon during the summer vacation, I found out a lot of people had interest in my story. So I started sharing my story from Jalgaon to NASA and that got some attention in the media. And so I started getting a lot of invitations for talks everywhere. Um, and that's how it all began. But while doing all of this, I was like, I need to do something more. This is not enough. Um, astronauty, I call it, astronauty stuff. <laughs> so I, um, got, I have, been a part of a lot of studies. If you look here, this is the simulated microgravity fluid loading study. Um, it was a study being done at the NASA Ames Research Center to understand how we can um, help our astronauts because during entry, a lot of uh, fluid loss and so they tend to get sick. Um, so it was to find mitigation um, steps to for, for that kind of uh, um, scenario. And what they did was I was in a six inch head down tilt position and um, for eight hours on two different days, eight hours and eight hours. And um, I was giving salt tablets to see if that helps retain the fluid. So it was a, an interesting study. I've also been a commander for NASA's HERA mission and a Mars analog mission at the Mars Desert Research Station in Utah. I have a couple of pictures, uh, a few pictures of that. I've been a scientist astronaut candidate. I trained as a scientist astronaut candidate for a commercial suborbital spaceflight research mission. And I've flown in this orange spacesuit and the and blue spacesuit that you would see me wearing, um, in microgravity flights uh, to study the performance of these spacesuits. Um, th those were flights in Falcon 20 aircrafts. I've also done a master's uh, in space studies, which I completed in 2019, human factors, because I had this engineering on I wanted to understand how human factors, um, how do we need to design our systems to, with humans in mind, right? Humans in the loop, because right now we're going to send humans to Mar moon and Mars. So we need technologies that are human friendly. And that was the reason. And currently I'm pursuing, pur pursuing my master, PhD in systems engineering. Uh, almost done with the coursework. This fall, I'll be done with all the coursework and I'll begin uh, the dissertation in spring. So I'm really excited about that. What is the research topic I'm going to work on? There are so many topics um, that I am interested in, spacesuits and um, augmented reality capable spacesuit helmet that I worked on uh, during the master's in space studies. So let's see how where I go with that. But yes, I have been training to be a pilot. I should have been done by that, but there have been a lot of pickups, which I don't want to spend time on right now, but I hope to earn my pilot's license soon. I have earned my scuba certification. Um, so these are the kind of skills uh, we need um, if, we, if we, I mean, they're not like mandatory skills. NASA does not specify them, but they're good to have skills. Uh, because astronauts have to work in the neutral buoyancy lab, which is a 40 feet deep uh, swimming pool in lockups of the space station and rovers and stuff. So they train um, in those uh, in the neutral buoyancy lab for 
um, several hours at a time in spacesuits. So, so the, these skills um, help. I, I wanted to test myself, challenge myself. I have never grown up as a swimmer. So can I handle the stress, pressure? I've even skydived on my um, birthdays a couple of times. And last year I went to earn my skydiving license and I had two successful skydives and landings solo. And the third one, my instructor gave me a wrong instruction. I shouldn't have listened to her and gone ahead and done what I was doing. And because of that, just 10 feet above, I listened to her last minute. It was so last minute, I didn't get time to think. I just listened to her and I slammed on the ground because the parachute did not flare completely. So I broke my ankle, <laughs> broke several bones, uh, but this was the only first event where I've done so many crazy things, but first time I broke bones, <laughs> but it was something I learned from as well. So every, every experience is a learning experience. And as you see in these pictures, I'm really packed. All are doing right. So we have Ganpati Bappa every year since uh, we've come here. Uh, we celebrated India's Independence Day. So I choreographed dances for moms and kids and we performed as well. So yeah, we, we've had like almost 150 to 200 people at our home for Ganesh Chaturthi every year. And I would cook for all of them. So it's been fun. Now, since we moved from California to Houston, uh, it, things have slowed down. COVID also happened. So we couldn't catch up on that. But yeah, these are the kind of things. I've also been an assistant scout with Boy Scouts since the last 10, 11 years now, um, working with my boys. It, it's a good bonding time. I go out on camps. I love that outdoors so experiences. So um, on, and like I said, I started doing these talks and speaking events. So um, um, these are some pictures from that Girl Scouts. Is, can, my uncle uh, is running an uh, English medium school in a rural area to give the benefit to the rural kids there. So I went there at their school and talked to these little ones. Uh, this is the Computer History Museum in San Francisco, a design code build event. I spoke over there. This is Kepler Ask Me Anything. These are scientists, astronomers, and um, yeah, all of them. I've worked with them during that Ask Me Anything. Staying fit is important. I try to stay fit put in a good deal, uh, number of exercises because I am a human test subject also at NASA here. It's a voluntary thing I do, but we need um, test subjects to, uh, we, we are doing a lot of tests and research on understanding um, those technologies we talked about or training um, capabilities that we need to develop for our astronauts when they're on the moon and Mars. So, um, who do we test with? Astronauts, their time is valuable, right? You have to book the crew time and you can't use them for every such test. So people like me who are passionate about this, who are physically fit, I have to go through an annual Air Force type three physical exam every year to be a human test subject. Even to be a commander for the HERA mission, uh, I had to go NASA's HERA. It's human exploration and research analog. Uh, I had to go through that. So um, yeah, staying fit is important um, if you want to become an astronaut, but even in general, right? We all are health conscious these days, which is a good thing to do. And this is me in the spacesuit at uh, the University of North Dakota. They have a spacesuit lab there. Uh, I'm wearing the HoloLens. I had developed uh, an uh, AR app for the HoloLens for astronauts to use. Uh, my goal is to design uh, an Iron Man helmet. You know, Iron Man helmet, you, are you guys movie buffs? I don't know, Avengers, I am a big space movie buff. <laughs> so Iron Man, his suit has the helmet where you can see, he can see the data from his suit uh, in front of him, right? Um, so something similar for astronauts. Actually, there are heads up displays that pilots use today as well. Um, so um, that's what I developed a smaller version of it for HoloLens, my goal is to, not have the astronauts wear the HoloLens, but have that capability in, integrated in the hardware itself and how maybe that might be my um, PhD research. Uh, but I am testing this a AR application on the HoloLens inside the spacesuit. It's a pressurized spacesuit. When the spacesuit is pressurized, you balloon up. And so it's difficult to perform the tasks. This is why Na NASA astronauts spend hours in the NBL, like I mentioned sometime some time ago, neutral buoyancy lab um, to test, uh, I mean, to practice for their EVAs or extravehicular activities they have to do up on the International Space Station. So some fun pictures. And like I mentioned, I've been a commander for analog missions. This is the NASA's HERA mission. It was in 2015. 
uh, it's a habitat um, to two level habitat so i'm this ladder was our only way to get to the upper level it's like a spacecraft basically and um, yeah so was a commander for that there is a lot i have a separate deck of slides to talk about that lots of pictures but we have we are limited on time so i'm just uh, covering in brief and this is me at the mars desert research station in utah mars analog it is a very mars like environment um, this was not run by nasa but it was a run a run by a different group uh, so we performed research on how astronauts would live and work on mars uh, i'm a bioastronautics researcher scientist astronaut candidate for a commercial suborbital space research project called Project Possum. This is the blue spacesuit and there is an orange spacesuit that you saw in the front, which I've flown in this Falcon 20 aircraft. It's a modified aircraft um, to, to support microgravity experiments. So the air airplane flies parabolas and when it flies parabolas, when you're climbing on the side of the parabola, you're pulling g-forces. When you're at the top, you're floating for a few seconds. So you're zero gravity at that time, about 20, 20, 23 seconds. And then it dives down again and you're pulling a lot of G-forces. So what happens is when you're pulling G-forces, the blood is being pulled away from your brain. And imagine what can happen when that happens, right? Your, your brain is being deprived of oxygen, you can pass. Up. So we train to handle our bodies uh, in G-forces. And um, I found out from all the, these training experiments and this research flight experiments that my body can handle g-forces really well. When you are in zero gravity, the opposite happens. The blood rushes to your brain because there is nothing to hold it, pull it down, right? <laughs> no gravity to pull it down. So at that time, when the blood is rushing, you can, everything like puffs up, but it's for short duration during the microgravity flights. But when, you, when astronauts are on the space station, they are in zero gravity for such a long time that starts affecting their vision and stuff. And that's what I talk about when I said, uh, I talk about uh, physio-psychological challenges of working in space. Um, but yeah, the, this is a Mooney aircraft, um, flew at 18,000 feet. And when you're flying at that height, you have to wear an oxygen mask uh, because this is not a pressurized aircraft. So to study the noctilucent clouds, um, those are clouds that appear in, in the polar regions during the summer months uh, in the upper mesosphere where there are not supposed to be any clouds. So why are these clouds there? Are they a byproduct of uh, pollution or greenhouse effects? We, are, we want to study that. And this is the whole purpose of the, this project. Uh, and that's why we train, because when you fly up to the upper mesosphere, there you experience zero gravity. How do, you have to wear uh, spacesuits, IVA spacesuits. This is an IVA spacesuit. IVA meaning intravehicular activity. So you use, use it within the uh, spacecraft. And EVA means extravehicular activity. You will use it outside the spacecraft, spacecraft for spacewalks, basically. So that's about it. Again, a lot to talk. I'm trying to restrain myself. I've done some land and sea survival spacecraft um, egress trainings as well. Like I said, I was scared of going in the deep water because I never grew up as a swimmer. So I took my swimming lessons um, when I decided to pursue this. And I, I, I became a good swimmer. But the only problem was I was always fearful of going beyond that five feet, <laughs> my height, right? Going into the deeper water. But I love to challenge myself. I struggled when I did my scuba certification on the first day and I had bruised myself because I was so scared at the bottom of the pool uh, in 12 feet, which is nothing now that I've trained. But that first experience was scary. So that's what I tell kids. If you have fears, conquer them. This was the first time I discovered a fear. But when I came back home, and I was shivering at that day quite a lot, but the body was physically stressed as well, right? I told myself, am I going to give up? I worked so hard to get this far just because of this. No, the fear is in your head. Just get over it. <laughs> and that's what I did. I calmed myself down. I went back and I got a good instructor. The previous instructor was... Uh, a guy who gave me a hard time, he just forced me into the water, pulled me and was really mean and rude. Brown lady, right? And that's how they behave with you. Uh, but he was fired uh, because other, I did not say anything. Uh, I'm too simple and naive to go and complain. I always took it on myself. It, was, it must have been my fault. I wasn't doing good. Um, but he was fired and then um, really nice um, instructor. She worked with me. 
and I my confidence grew because of her encouragement and I was able to complete that certification. So it was the biggest victory ever <laughs> to overcome that fear, to challenge myself and to get that certification. And that helped me get into the ocean. This is like 40 feet deep ocean. There are jellyfish swing, swimming under us. <laughs> so we were told to be aware of those. So here you see, I'm in here. I'm trying to make to the lifeboat. And here we're trying to inflate our life vests and uh, save ourselves. And this is after, uh, after all that training we got on board. And then we built tents from parachutes from a spacecraft. I'm upside down here because my eyes are fully covered. We are simulating that I am in a spacecraft that has dived into the ocean, crashed into the ocean. I have to get out and save, my, save myself. There is a video about that. I don't think I have it in this one, but it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, so it's dark, supposed to be dark. So I'm wearing glasses that are completely blocked. I can't see anything, I'm blind. And I'm in, buckled in my seat in the spacecraft. I'm upside down. And then I'm breathing from a bottle of air. And then I'm finding the exit and coming out in the dark. Uh, so that was the training. Uh, this is just a summary of uh, the things that I talked about. How much time do we have or are we out of time? No, I think uh, this is really great, actually, Animaji. Uh, Maybe five minutes. Yeah, okay. we are yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so I'll wrap up. I don't think I will not talk about Kepler. What do I have? And then these slides I will not talk about. So I'll just okay. finish here. Today I'm in the Johnson Space Center. I made this move. I, um, I After my master's in aerospace engineering itself, I wanted to come here in Houston because JSC is where all the astronauts live and work and all the human spaceflight stuff happens, right? At NASA Ames in California, it's a research center, no human spaceflight stuff. And my um, passion has always been to be close to where the astronauts are um, because I want to become an astronaut. <laughs> so uh, finally, the boys were younger. We were in San Ramon in California, which was a very beautiful place to raise kids. Um, so I decided I want to give them the priority. So I kept putting it off. And finally, now that they were older, my work on Kepler mission was over. I convinced them, let's move to Houston, please guys. This is now or never for me. And thank you, I uh, agreed. <laughs> I have two boys. One is doing in second year in um, uh, at UT Arlington, a sophomore year. And the old younger one is a sophomore in high school here. So finally they, they are here and we are all settled now. And I'm working here. I get to meet astronauts, astronaut Sanita Williams, everyone knows her, Josh Casara. They were training um, for their mission on Boeing Starliner. Uh, and I got to meet them, watch them train, which was really exciting for me. I was the Orion spacecraft simulations um, lab manager till last November. This is a mock-up of the Orion spacecraft uh, where I would host all the flight software that we are going to um, have. That is going to fly uh, Orion, basically. It's a fully automated spacecraft. And I provided the NASA user community with whatever tools they need along with the flight software um, to perform their tests. Here, I am a human test subject wearing the virtual reality goggles. I see the surface of Mars in front of me and an electrical stimulus is being passed behind my ear to the neurovestibular organ. That organ is responsible for um, us understanding our orientation up and down sense of direction, right? Uh, when you are in zero gravity, you don't have that sense of direction because it's, there's no up or down in zero gravity, you're floating. So when astronauts arrive on the surface of Mars, there's going to be no one to help them get out of the spacecraft. Uh, if you've watched astronauts returning from the space station, they have to be lifted out of the spacecraft. They can't just jump out and start walking because in zero gravity, your body forgets how to walk and you have to start training again. So when they arrive on Mars, there'll be no one to help them. How are they going to start walking? So we need to figure out how to do that. Do we need to give them special training? And that's what we are test testing in this uh, research study. And I'm going back for another similar one um, in, in a month. Uh, I've worked on NASA's newest spacesuit for a short amount of time, but it has been for an extra XEMU. It's called the XEMU, Extra Vehicular Mobility Unit. These are the displays that are going to be in the Orion spacecraft when humans fly aboard. The, the flight that's happening in November on November 14th, um, it's not going to be a manned flight, right? So there are no displays in it. So I was setting up these displays in our lab, trying to test them out and with the uh, how things, the telemetry data from the spacecraft displays on there. Um, this is me in the mission control center. Today, I am the project lead for the Lunar Gateway Mission Control Center. You all know what the space station is, right? It's orbiting the Earth. 
we are going to have a similar smaller space station around the moon. It's called the Lunar Gateway. Um, it is going to stop over for astronauts uh, who go to the surface of the moon or forward towards Mars. So I'm leading the project to set up a similar mission control center for the Lunar Gateway. Um, but in a couple of weeks, I'm switching to another very exciting opportunity <laughs> that I'm really excited about. I'm going to actually be a part of real-time space flight operations. So I will be working as a flight controller in the mission control center. Um, but yep, exciting times. Kepler telescope will not go over that. Humanity's return to moon. Why are we going back to the moon? I went for the Artemis launch that was supposed to happen <laughs> last month. It didn't fly, it's flying this uh, November because of the hydrogen leak. But I got, got to go take a picture with the rocket and the Orion spacecraft. I worked on Orion spacecraft to a small extent, right? So that was really an exciting um, experience for me to, I watched first time ever in my life, a rocket launch last October uh, of the inspiration for the all civilian space flight. I don't know if you guys saw that. Had I won that competition, uh, for the prosperity seat, I would have been on the spacecraft, but my bad luck. <laughs> uh, my fellow uh, scientist astronaut candidate, uh, Sean Proctor, she flew, um, she won that seat and she flew on that. But just getting to watch that launch was really exciting. A little girl who grew up in Jalgao, getting to watch a launch in real life, what it was a, such a um, humbling feeling for me, right? Um, but this is what I, I wish I could, because this is going to be the most powerful rocket, the SLS rocket, the Space Launch System rocket in the world that we've ever flown. And so the sounds, the, the smell of the rocket fuel, the visuals, it's going to be so amazing. And so I took the time off and went, but we didn't launch. Uh, don't know if I can go for the November 14th. But yes, this is all I talk about the, um, the Artemis missions. And we can do that at some later point. I don't want to take up a lot of time. Thank you. I hope that was something uh, worthwhile. Um, and this is me on social media. Um, yeah, students, kids, you can connect with me. I will, and ask me questions. I'll try to reply to them uh, as and when possible. I even started a YouTube channel just recently, Space Frontier with Anima. I'm going to do small snippets, talks uh, about Kepler and about what we do at NASA, Artemis missions, and a lot of different topics. So hope you all can um, follow and connect and subscribe and share. So thank you for that. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Anima. What an incredible journey. What a dedication. Oh my God. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, anyway, one thing I will uh, ask actually, if, uh, if you would have to tell our uh, young audience actually some advice, what you will be, what would that be? So I, I would say, yes, have okay. dreams. Don't fear to dream big because I, uh, when I started talking as a little kid, I want to become a pilot. I want to become an astronaut. I was shot down. Yeah, right. You're going to become. So if that, I grew up in that kind of, an, even my master's in computer applications, I, I was, uh, my parents were questioned, she has to get married and stay at home and raise kids. Why let her study for a master's? Uh, even convent, why educate your girls in a convent? But the parents yeah. saw that and they wanted to give us equal opportunities. So what I'm saying is basically, don't fear. I stopped talking about what I wanted to do as a kid when I was, when I faced that. Um, but mm -hmm. I still kept it in my mind and kept working towards it. And then everyone, so, I silenced everyone today, right? So dream big today, your parents are supportive. Everyone around you is supportive, but you cannot be lazy and you cannot expect your dreams come true. You have to work hard. Look at me. There will be obstacles. There will be failures. Um, and it, you cannot give up when you have failures. Think of that as a stepping stone. Learn from that failure. Uh, learn from that experience and see how you can use it positively and keep going. So you have to be persistent. You have to be patient. You have to work hard. Look at me, how patient I've been throughout my journey. There's no guarantee I will become an astronaut, but I'm still doing it, right? So also exactly. have a backup plan. Have a backup plan. Today, uh, I, I don't know if I will become an astronaut, but I'm working in the space flight field, right? I'm working at NASA, which itself is fulfilling and satisfy, satisfying to me. Every day I go to work, I'm excited. So choose hmm. a career, choose education that, will, that you're really passionate about. It doesn't have to be, if it is engineering, um, or science, 
um, work on that, get a master's, get a uh, get the highest degree you can, because the more education you have, the better you will do. Even if it's arts or even if it's finances or business, mm -hmm. yes, pick, pick that field, but do your best in everything you do. So aim for the yeah. best and have a very positive attitude. My positive attitude, being optimistic in, at every stage has helped me, um, especially we like um, um, uh, Tope sir was mentioning that we do feel a lot of uh, experience, some sort of discrimination. And I've experienced that being a brown woman, I was chosen as a commander. Of course, I was yeah. highly qualified that any, than anyone else, right? But does that matter? No, the crew was not really very happy about it. So I've been through experiences all along, mm -hmm. but don't let anything pull you down. Okay. Be persistent. Good. Good, very good adv advice. Thank you for that. Uh, one last question, actually. Other than mm -hmm. your passion for the, of course, the astronomy and to being a um, astronaut, any other things? Of course, you have other uh, um, hobbies as well. Would you like to share one of those? Just quickly oh. in one minute. Oh, I have. So it's okay to have the hobbies <laughs> other than the, what you are chasing. Yes, as well. <laughs> absolutely. And that's what I'm thinking. Which one should I choose? You've seen me uh, choreographing dances. I, I have been a, 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 what do you call that? Um, singer, uh, but not a trained singer. Uh, I love singing. Wow. I love drawing and painting. See that painting? I don't know if you guys see this, this moon, moon painting. Oh, that that's, that's very cool. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a lot of um, hobbies. So and sharing my story with everyone, uh, with the younger generation, Great. because I couldn't get the guidance. So I want to give that mm. guidance to them, right? Growing up. So very good. Yep. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Anima. And uh, thank you. Really inspiring. Thank you so Thanks. Appreciate uh, the I think Kanaya had a question. Yes. Sure. Uh, yes. I have, sure, a, sure. I have a question. Um, so what uh -huh. was the purpose of Kepler, Kepler's mission? What was Kepler's, uh, the purpose of Kepler mission? Yeah. Yeah, so Kepler was launched to, see, we all are curious. Are there aliens? Is there life like us out there, right? So we want to answer that question. And doing that scientifically is the only way NASA can prove if there is life outside or not, uh, outside the Earth or out in outer space or not. And so we launched the Kepler telescope. The first step would be sitting here on Earth. How can we find out? Okay. Um, the first step would be to find Earth-like planets, right? So um, to subjective of Kepler mission, to look for Earth-like planets around sun-like stars in their habitable zone in our galaxy. That's the entire mission. Why sun-like stars? Why Earth-like planets? Because sun and Earth is the only, it's like a model that we know where life exists, right? We have evidence that life exists here. Is there any other system that has this kind of life? No. So we are, we are using this as a benchmark to compare. When we look out there, are there Earth-like planets? And in that process, uh, Kepler has found a lot of Earth-like planets, but they are not the Earth twins. They are Earth cousins. They are not, uh, we can't call them Earth 2.0. And that's what I'm going to talk about, why we can't do that in my next um, YouTube channel episode. So I will share that link with you guys and uh, I'll explain that with pictures and stuff. Um, Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Good question. Any other questions? I know Kanaya has, must have a lot of questions. <laughs> you can reach out to me, um, but uh, if, is there any other question I can answer? No, as of okay. right now. Good. Okay, cool. Thank you for sharing Thank your you. time, Rima. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, Anima. Thank you. It was a pleasure. What next uh, is, uh, I think, uh, uh, Chaiji, the uh, speeches, is it? Is it Kanaya's women's contribution? To yes, and Yogesh is going to make an right? Yes. Yeah. So this is the allocation computation for age group 7 to 16. Uh, timeline is uh, four, four to five minutes. I'll read through the re rules real quickly. The goal of the elocution competition is to encourage the skills and talents related to the art of speaking in public. And other, uh, uh, unlike me reading it, you have to learn how to speak in public without reading. 
Just kidding. We'll get there. The speech may not exceed minutes in duration as per competition group. The time limit will be strictly enforced. A 60 second warning will be given to both the groups. Language of the speech will be strictly English. Marathi mother bola hai chani hai. Hai chat English mother. Points will be awarded based on the following criteria. Content, speaking presentation, and the decision of the judges will be final. There will be no recount. Today's speech is no, about- No, no, oh, no, oh, okay. So you're going to tell, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so do I- Go ahead, Kamea. Okay. <laughs> Today's speech is about a female warrior. Her name is- We lost you there. No, no, no. Start from the okay. base. So it's muted. Okay. Uh, we lost the sound. Okay. And I was not heard. Go ahead. Can I go? Yeah. Okay. Today's speech is about a female warrior. Her name is Rani Lakshmi Bai, an unforgettable warrior in the history of India. She is famous as the Rani of Jasi or the prominent queen of Jasi. Varanasi is the place she belongs to, widely called as Kashi. Kashi. It was 1857 when the queen showed her heroism and courage rising with a rebellion against the Britishers. Rani Lakshmi Bai was born on November 19, 1828 in Varanasi. She died on June 17, 1858 at the age of 30 in Gwalivar, India. In her childhood, Marini Karnika got all the schooling in martial arts, fencing, horse riding, and shooting. Rahu Saib, Nana Saib, and Tata Tope, Tope taught her martial arts. Rani Lakshmi Bai had a couple of Maris as was good as horse riding. The two Maris was named Sarangi and Bhavan. At the age of 14, Marni Karnika married Maharaja Gangadhar Rao Nilwakar in 1842, who was the king of Jasi. After marriage, she was named Lakshmi Bai. The queen of Jasi fought with impeccable bravery and courage. She single-handedly fought hit with, with the British army till one of the English horsemen struck her on the rear head. Despite being heavily wounded, she continued the fight bravely and killed the horseman. She fell on the horse and tumbled to the ground. Rani Lakshmi Bai will always be remembered among us, the bravest fighters in Indian history. Rani Lakshmi Bai, the Rani of Jasi, was the first female warrior in the Indian history to be this heroic and powerful. She offered her life in the struggle of Swaraj and the independence of India from British sovereignty. Rani Lakshmi Bai is shining example of patriotism and pride in one's country. For many people, she is a motivation and a source of admiration. Her name will forever be imprinted in the gold letters in Indian history and the hearts of all India. Thank you. That was great. Good job. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. And the winner is? Uh, Will Lin. Yeah. Who's declaring the winner? Um, Prayag. <laughs> yeah, so we have the sole participant. So, yeah, thanks, Kanaya, for doing the research on Rani Lakshmi Bai. And, yeah, it was really great to listen from you. So, yeah, you are the winner of this competition. Thank you. Great job, buddy. Great, great job, job. Kanaya. Congratulations, Kanaya. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now, please allow me to introduce a person who had a great vision and laid a strong foundation of uh, SMAP, Ch Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, America Parivar. Mr. Uh, Vijay Patilji, I kindly request you to please address us. And basically, uh, basically his roots are also from Jalgaon. 
So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you, Ajinkya. And namaskar, yes, everyone. Uh, namaste, Ajinkya. Wish wishes to all of you. Hope you can hear me okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So wish wishes to all you. of you on the birth anniversary of uh, Maharan Lakshibai. Uh, I'm in the U.S., originally from Jalgao, as you see, uh, as we just heard from Ajinkya. looks like we got like three, four of us from Jalgao here. I see uh, Vinaya ji, Anima ji, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, Ajinkya, me, and a few others. And I see three Vijays as well on the call, which is good. 20% uh, of the population is Vijay. Uh, <laughs> so uh, nice to see that, that coincidence. <laughs> um, so I've been in U.S. for almost 20, 25 years now. Uh, haven't even heard of an event where uh, people are celebrating birth anniversary of Randa Shimbai in this case, or some other legendary uh, heroes. So this is a new beginning, and SMAP is honored to provide that platform uh, to, to all of us. Uh, I really wanted to, first of all, congratulate and thank you, the Dallas team, for taking this initiative. Uh, it's not easy to do something different. And then that's up to you for taking this initiative. We should be telling the stories of Maharaj Lakshmi and others to all our children. Uh, Kanaya did a wonderful job in summarizing her life in four minutes. Incredible. Uh, what I noticed from that is Ran Lakshmi was only 30 years old. She has left a tremendous legacy at, in just in 30 years of 30 years span in life, right? Uh, I'm in 40s and I can see what I've done, not much. So it's incredible, Chaturvedi Shivaji Maharaj, uh, he was around only for 49, 50 years. And see what, what, we has, what he has done, he inspired millions of people around the world, right? Uh, so we need to have those more role models, leaders in the community so that we all get inspiration, we all do a lot more uh, than we can. Uh, Paraji, Animaji, uh, thank you for supporting the events. You have been with us from day one and uh, really appreciate uh, your Two things, uh, your ability to pursue your dreams, at the same time, your vision and your strong roots that you're showing off wherever you go. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, we, we all, it is easy to get disconnected from your roots, but keeping the roots strong in whatever you do is, is really, really required, really important. Uh, so thank you so much for being such a good role model for many of, uh, many of us. So just wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about SMAP. Uh, Ajinkya, I'd like to correct you. Uh, SMAP, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Antarashtri Parivar. Uh, you were correct two years ago. It was America Parivar. Uh, but uh, now we have expanded to pretty much uh, 20, 30 countries around the world. And um, we are, uh, I call it new kid on the block. We've been around for four years. Out of four years, uh, two years before COVID, and then two years in COVID. So think about our journey, right? Half of our journey is literally no journey, sitting at home, right, for two years. Uh, but next year, uh, the fifth anniversary of uh, our organization, we'll be celebrating Shu Jayanti in uh, more than 50 places around the world. We got 59 confirmed, so I'll just call it 50 was the target. And that's not small. It is incredible. And it's incredible uh, because one, small amount of time, and then two, the, the reason, the cause that we have this foundation for or the platform for is resonating with people. It's time for all of us to connect to our roots, time for all of us to be honest about who we are, like the way other communities are. Ask any Italian about Italian heritage. Ask any British guy in the US about British heritage, right? Italian guy will never tell you about the mafia problem in Italy. They'll always tell you, tell you about the, 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 the French people, same exact thing, right? Uh, tell positive, glorified stories about the heritage. And we need to do that. We need to be glorifying ourselves around the world with what our heritage is. Um, just imagine 20, 30 million people living outside of US and then and promoting India on a big scale in a very consistent manner. It will be a different country. Uh, so doing our part as a part of SMAP Foundation, uh, I live with two goals of SMAP. Uh, two prominent, we got five, six other objectives, but the key mission as I call them are two. One is, uniting uh, people and providing the leadership platform for that. And the leadership platform is coming from our heritage, but telling the stories of Maharani Lakshmi Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, to ourselves first, because we are not even educated honestly on, on the stories. So we should know first, and our next generation should know that. 
So when, when Kanaya goes to college and school in American system, he will have uh, knowledge about modern Russian, but he can compete and then talk to others who are, who are saying Alexander the Great was great. So Kanaya can say, no, look at Chattopi Shivaji Maharaj. I'm not comparing people, but the, the list of great leaders of the, in the world, Chattopi Shivaji Maharaj should be in that list, right? Unless you empower them or educate them with the knowledge, that's not going to happen. So we're going to do that as a part of this platform. That's the old mission number one. The mission number two we have is, which is a, which is a long goal, is building SMAP centers on the lines of YMCA. Uh, I'm sure some of you know what YMCA stands for. It's Young Men Christian Association. Started probably about 80, 90 years ago. They are in almost 100 plus countries, 60 million members or something, doing an incredible job in providing the opportunities to youth so that they can mentally strong, physically strong, and do good things for the society. We need to do the same thing under SMAP with our heritage. We have a lot to offer. 10,000 years of history, a lot to offer, and uh, we will do that through SMAP Foundation uh, Leadership Centers. So those are the two things I wanted to take you with you. And, and uh, as I said, um, I really thank and congratulate you for your leadership. Uh, it's not easy to do something different. And uh, this is resonating with people. Right? Now it's like 59 cities around the world. The goal is by 2030, it will be 400 cities around the world, which is the fourth 400th anniversary of Chattopay Shivaji Maharaj. Uh, so we'll be doing that around the world. I'm pretty confident uh, we will get there with the response we got in the first five years. So thank you again for your leadership. You all are, you all are role models. And let's continue uh, with that so that we can empower, inspire others. That's it from my side. Thank you. Ajinkya, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Vijay Ji. Thank you. Chaiji, you want to take over? Uh, yes, Vijay is going to. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah, thanks, uh, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us uh, today's event. Uh, because, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, today, we wanted to uh, see that one that our women warriors, uh, like uh, everybody's mother and uh, sisters, and how uh, they can uh, guide us and how they have guided us. So we uh, tried to say the people, yeah, no, uh, our uh, Rani's queens are different totally and we can get inspired, a lot of inspiration for them. That was a goal today. But I thanks uh, to our team, DFW team for making it happen and uh, doing it uh, everything uh, you did it for um, make it successful and bring to the people. And uh, our two speakers, uh, especially uh, Parag and Animaji, they took us into different extremes. <laughs> uh, the intriguing questions, Mark, and uh, the thoughts Parag has given to us uh, makes us to think a lot. Uh, what we are, where we are going, and what is our responsibility. Uh, Animaji took us to the differently total, uh, different planet. And uh, uh, being in the space science, uh, myself was, uh, I started up in engineering uh, in the Department of Space in Bangalore. Uh, so it was uh, pretty interesting to connect back uh, to those things. So uh, thanks everyone, and absolutely Vijayji, uh, thank you for joining and uh, yeah, telling us about uh, more our plans and 50 cities and more than 15 countries. Uh, that is an amazing thing. That's why we are at the last year. And uh, thanks everyone. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, back, back to you. you. Thank you. Thank you all. And I think that will conclude today's program. Big applaud to everyone. Thank you, Vijayji, for joining. And yes, thank you.